this doctrine or this theory because it wasn't available to the average person, see. And it's just with the influx of the New Age movement and with the occultists coming in, and evidently I'm not really sure how it worked into the evangelical movement, but perhaps a Satanist or a witch got saved and pulled some of the beliefs in, and then it started going through the evangelical. I mean, I'm not sure why they went to this, but... The, well, the this doctrine. Is all, yeah, this all is mixing in with the Sumerian texts of the Anunnaki's, um, Stargate, uh, UFOs, and so there. It's not just this serpent seed and these no. fallen angels. It is mixing in. They're wanting us to believe that we have aliens out there, that there are flying saucers, and that these, that these, um, and that you know that these are. You know that these are angels, or these are fallen angels, or these are Anunnakis, or whatever. So I mean, it's it's not it's going into where it appears that they have governments backing this up too. That we have that they don't. It's not just evangelicals believing a lie. It seems to me like it's a, everybody's getting the same memo, and they're all following the same script well, from well, Hollywood, have... from the from Fox News to all the media news outlets to you know NASA to I mean just everyone. Well, when you see Hollywood promote what we always know, Hollywood has never, ever been a friend of the gospel or of the church or of the Christian. Right. And when Hollywood starts promoting an idea, you have to wonder what is the agenda and why. They would never present something in Scripture. They're either going to pervert Scripture or mock Scripture. It's one or the other, or usually both. So when Hollywood and the movies and all these other books are coming out from the New Age, and they're promoting this idea, you have to say, this cannot be scriptural. There's another agenda. And I believe there is. They're preparing us for this. They're probably preparing us to say, oh, the rapture, you know, they disappeared or whatever, and say, you know, that these outer space aliens came in and removed the bad seeds from us, and now we're here alone. And I'm not talking about pre-trib because we don't believe that. Right. But... um and then, see, some of the other things, too, goes into Daniel. I believe you've mentioned this before with Daniel 2 about okay. the kingdoms of clay. And I'll give a quote there yeah, let's, let's talk about that. I meant to go over that scripture because that's one of the ones they use. It's one of their main ones where they mingled their seed among us or something. Yeah, here's her quote. The kingdoms made of iron and clay will fall, just like all the kingdoms before them, by the hand of God. The gold kingdom of the fallen angels the silver kingdom of the fallen angels mating with humans to produce the giants before the flood, the bronze race of the demigods with the remnant of the giants, the iron race of demigods mixing with, mixing with pagans like the Canaanites, and the clay and iron race consisting of the mixing between the good seed of Abraham and Satan's evil lineages, all will be destroyed. Scripture plainly states, that mixing fallen angel genetics and mankind will not hold together. Yet Satan, through the ages, has tried and tried to remake mankind to his pleasing, unquote. And anybody who has the book can find that on page 404. Now here again, she's saying the scriptures plainly state about the mixing of the fallen angels. Well, you go to Daniel 2 from where they're quoting. And we see there that Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream. And he said he told the dream to um, Daniel. And it says, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. So Daniel is given the interpretation. And it's clear there that this is the interpretation. There's nothing symbolic. It gives the symbology. It gives the dream. And then it says, here's the interpretation. So that's, it's, it's laid out for us, and here's what it says. Daniel says, thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And then I'll jump a little bit. Thou art this head of gold. Nebuchadnezzar, you represent this head of gold. What did Joyce say up here? She says, oh, the gold kingdom is of the fallen angels. That's not what the scripture says. Mm. She's going back to the Garden of Eden where Satan came in to Eve, supposedly. And I mean supposedly because there's no scripture. See how they go against the scripture over and over. It says, thou art this head of gold. Then Daniel continues. He says, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. We're specifically talking of kingdoms. It starts, the head of gold starts with Nebuchadnezzar. After him comes the silver kingdom, and that is a kingdom inferior. What does Joy say? Oh no, the silver kingdom's the fallen angels made them with humans to produce the giants before the flood. 
see how they keep changing and lying about the scripture. The scripture is so clear, and I know you said the others are mentioning this too. This is not just one person's idea. No. All these books take the same All idea. Of them. Mm. Yeah, and then, of course, the scripture continues, after thee shall rise another kingdom, and then the fourth, and it just says that as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Nothing mixed here with aliens, nothing mixed here with, you know, the fallen angels, the Nephilim, the UFOs coming back, nothing about what you were talking about, boogie babies and everything else. Yeah. Nothing like Demonic this Demonic boogie bears. Boogie bears are... <laughs> It's just a kingdom is partly weak and partly broken. And this is, and where else I saw us iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They're just, it's the kingdom, it's not here with a sexual connotation whatsoever. And it says they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Well, if you're having this sexual intercourse like they're saying, they're cleaving one to another. It's just scripture turned over and over and over. And the Bible warns about resting the scriptures. It says we'll do it to our own destruction. Yes. And we have got to be so careful that we are not taking the scriptures and resting them. And the sad part is people do not know their Bible, and they read this, like she says, the scripture plainly states. But it doesn't. But they say, well, the Bible says so because she said so. Folks, go to the Bible. Go to the Bible and not her. And I wouldn't... (laughs) But Chuck Misler, here, Henry Morris, who's a you know, big creationist, they all use this scripture and say, and, and, the, and the seed of men. And here, it's basically plain as, plainly written, as you have stated, well, as you well presented, that this is just this group of people are going to be mixing their seed with other nations or other people. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be part strong and part weak. That's right. the mixture. Yeah. It won't hold together. And then the other thing that they refer to so often, the watchers, the Nephilim and these watchers. Right. And they're always saying that the watchers are so evil. 